Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Cheryl Yun. Here's a look at our top stories tonight. Restaurants fear loss in business after new rule requiring big parties to take rapid antigen tests. Daily COVID cases approach 10,000, but authorities insist the upward trend is expected. And Pakistan is seeking aid from the international community to deal with massive floods. A new rule meant to curb the spread of COVID at banquets and restaurants is proving to be a nightmare for frontline staff. Groups of nine or more diners have to conduct rapid antigen tests, but staff members are struggling to inspect everyone's records. Macy Mock reports. Just weeks after restaurants were asked to turn away customers possessing red or amber health codes, staff members are now faced with yet another conundrum. From today, parties of nine or more people must produce photo proof of a negative rapid antigen test result on top of leave home safe and vaccination records. The requirement came following a recent rebound of COVID cases in the city, although authorities stopped short of reducing the number of diners per table or cutting short operation hours. The restaurant has also prepared RAT kits for customers who are absent-minded or simply unaware of the rule. But for hygiene reasons, they can only take the test at an outdoor location away from the crowd. The rule originally applies to banquets, but health officials later clarified that all parties of nine or more people are also bound by it even if they are seated at separate tables. Some newlyweds admitted they were caught by surprise. This groom said he was only notified yesterday by the hotel regarding the arrangement, and he had a hard time informing family and friends attending the banquet today. Another groom said the measure was especially inconvenient for the elderly. Chief Secretary Eric Chen defended the RAT requirement on radio. He explained that guests attending banquets often walk around without masks and mingles with others, creating transmission risks. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. COVID infections are creeping towards the 10,000 mark, just days after health officials predicted that cases could return to five digits. The hospital authority is also curtailing general outpatient clinic services so that it can focus on treating COVID patients. Here's Macy Mock again. After hovering in the 8,000 region for the past four days, COVID infections in the city spiked again. New cases reached 9,708 today, the highest since March the 25th, and only 213 were imported. The confirmed cases is still increasing in an increasing trend with recent uh, more faster rate, possibly due to the increasing proportion of BA.5 variant, Omicron variant. So the numbers exist 10,000 is as expected. Um, in the coming days. Chief Manager Larry Lee said the hospital authority will now focus their manpower and resources on its designated COVID clinics and remote consultations. Lee said the daily quota for both services will be expanded by 1,000 to 3,300. But the adjustment comes at the expense of general outpatient services, which will be curtailed from tomorrow. Non-emergency surgeries at public hospitals will also be affected, as well as day and outpatient services. More than 2,450 people are still being treated for COVID in public hospital, including 339 new admissions. There were also 10 additional COVID-related deaths. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Chief Secretary Eric Chan hinted it could take some time before restrictions for cross-border travel can be lifted. But a plan which could make it easier for SAR residents to travel north could get the green light from the mainland soon. Chloe Fung tells us more. 
For more than two years, Hong Kong's border with the mainland has been largely shut. Chief Executive Zhang Li is expected to meet with Guangdong officials in the coming days to discuss the matter, rekindling hopes of quarantine-free cross-border travel. But Chief Secretary Eric Chen tried to keep the optimism in check, saying the recent COVID flare-up in the SER may be a stumbling block. He stressed the government has been studying alternative measures to facilitate movement, including the so-called proposal of reverse isolation. Under the scheme, Hong Kongers will serve quarantine in the city before they travel north in closed-loop transport. This forgoes the need to secure a reservation for a mainland isolation facility, which many complained was extremely difficult due to limited supply. Chen said mainland officials have reacted positively about the plan and hoped to achieve a breakthrough soon. Another short-term goal, he said, is to raise the quota for Hong Kongers to cross into the mainland, now capped at 2,000 daily. The government number two reiterated the recent relaxation of inbound quarantine for overseas arrivals will not affect the timetable for reopening the land border. He was referring to the 3 plus 4 model, under which travelers need to spend only three nights in an isolation hotel, down from seven previously. Since the plan came into force two weeks ago, the number of inbound travelers more than doubled. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. A 61-year-old man remains missing after he allegedly went hiking in Sai Kung yesterday. Police and fire services mounted a search near Shek Okshan, where Chen Kim Meng's mobile phone last emitted a signal. The man left his Tokwa Wan home yesterday morning after telling his family of his itinerary, but he never returned. Chen was wearing a white T-shirt, black trousers and sneakers, while carrying a black rucksack and a blue alpenstock. Police urged those with information to call their Kowloon West Missing Person Unit on 36618038. Two U.S. warships were spotted sailing through the Taiwan Strait today. It's the first such operation since House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited the island and pushed tensions with Beijing to new heights. The USS Antietam and USS Chancellorsville are guided missiles cruisers. In a statement, the U.S. 7th Fleet said they were there to conduct a routine transit. China said it would be monitoring the vessels and is ready to react to any provocations. Footage captured by a drone flying on a Taiwan-controlled island has gone viral online. Many were surprised how close the drone went up to a soldier standing sentinel on Kinmen, just across Fujian province. The guard immediately notified his peers after spotting the device. Taiwan's Kinmen Defense Command confirmed that an unidentified aircraft had flown near the Lieyu Township. It believed the drone was operated by a civilian, and flares were fired to make it go away. Pakistan is pleading for help as its death toll from devastating floods surged past 1,000 and is not over yet as residents braced for fresh deluges today. Winner Wong reports. People here in the southwestern state of Balochistan found themselves wading through neck deep waters, bringing pets and anything else they could from home to the safety of dry land. As you can see, we are doing all this on our own, said this displaced resident. Nobody from the government is here to help us. Nobody has even asked about us. Meanwhile, the prime minister's office released footage of leader Shabazz Sharif in a different state, throwing relief supplies from a helicopter to people below. The situation here in Sindh was equally devastating, as the Kabul River swelled to inundate homes. Pakistan is currently facing one of its worst natural disasters in over a decade. Virtually the entire country has been affected by sweeping monsoons. 
The torrential rains first began in June and has since displaced 33 million people, while the death toll shot past 1,000 this weekend, including hundreds of children. Over 100 people died throughout the past day alone. On Friday, leaders appealed to the international community for help and have blamed the tragedy on climate change. Countries like the United Arab Emirates and neighboring Iran have already vowed to send aid. A massive hunger and economic crisis is also looming. Waters have been destroying crops and killing livestock, which experts believe will take a massive toll on the country that relies heavily on agriculture-based exports. Wina Wang, HKIBC. Before we go, a car that once belonged to the late Princess Diana was auctioned off for over 760,000 US dollars. 550,000 pounds on the Ford Escort. I've never said that before. Surely 600,000 comes in Dubai. 620, it's back in Cheshire, ladies and gentlemen. It's 650,000 pounds, Alderley Edge. First time. It's 650,000 pounds, Alderley Edge. Second time. Here's the hammer. At Silverstone Auction, selling then the Diana Princess of Wales, 1985 Ford Escort RS Turbo S1 for £650,000, third and final. It was a thrilling competition for the prized car as a hopeful buyer in Dubai tried to outbid those within Britain. But in the end, it was a Cheshire bidder who won. Princess Diana personally drove the car for nearly three years from August 1985 and was pictured with it on multiple occasions. On to the weather now. Sunny periods tomorrow, apart from isolated showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures will range between 28 and 33 degrees. A mix of sunny spells and showers in the coming days. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Sunday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Cheryl Yun. Thanks for watching. Good night.